I guess this might come under the heading of uh, cleaning the basement metaphorically and otherwise. Um, I had written actually something a long time ago. Um, well, not a long time ago, a couple of years ago. Uh, after a year of putting up with the last presidential election. And, you know, people thought that I was getting overly hostile. Um, you know, especially with, you know, that old red herring that the politicians on the right were using. You know, about gay people. Um, now, as a teenager, seven years after Stonewall, I had the integrity to tell the world, you know, who and what I am. I marched in my first GLBT parade on Pride Day, 1975, at the age of 14, only to endure a good Christians pelting we marchers with fruit. A pastor made the mistake of hitting my boyfriend, Anthony, with a grapefruit, an orb with which I picked up and in the best Joe DiMaggio butch throw of my life, beamed the offending pastor right off the head. My constitution does not permit me to take the first swing, but I will throw the second punch, which will not be forgotten by its recipient. Pay attention. I fought this war of self-emancipation and sexual liberation on the streets of Boston and New York long ago, and this old warrior was na naive enough to believe that all had been settled only to discover that the wisdom of my father was true in turbulent and painful times those in power or that wish to hold it over others seek a scapegoat. People like Pat Robertson that love to blame fags, dykes, intellectuals, feminists and behind the old boy doors even women for natural disasters need to be accountable for the murderous history of the religion they uphold. As they behave ever so contrary to their sa Savior's ways and examples. As for being the scapegoat for bigoted, phobic, and racist peoples, well, we are not their whipping boy any longer. And now that people are taking swings back, um, including the Supreme Court, um, do it for your own liberty and freedom, at least, you know. For all their morality and modesty, the religious right seems to be obsessed with knocking about in my underwear drawer. Dangerous place to be for anybody. That's why I keep it behind a closed door in my bedroom. Of course, they find it empty because yours truly, in their eyes anyway, is a big stinky free-balling hippie. Um, you know, you can, it's a multiple choice there. You can pick one or the other to decide what I'm really like. So I've endured over a year, and it was over a year at that point of insults before I wrote this, um, on the last election season. I'm not alone as millions of my brothers and sisters, not just in these United States, but those worldwide, have felt the stinging and sometimes deadly arrows of the evangelical or fundamentalist bow and their henchmen, I mean horsemen, on that side of the aisle, those that pay lip service to the hate, even though they really don't care about the bedroom of others, having no real investment in suppressing the freedom of others unless it means they will get a tax break. Omavir is not taking it anymore. The energy from these people has ignited a fire in me, and it would have been best for them not to wake the sleeping dragon. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not playing with this anymore. You know, 1975 was a long time ago. And some people have been at it a lot longer than I have in, um, you know, the realm of human rights and GLBT rights in this country. While I loathe political correctness and cannot usually stomach those that try to impose it on me, there are such things as decency and respect. To our friends in the closet, and this is, this out individual is not judging you. At the very least, please do not contribute to the hatred by going along with it, because you are afraid of being found out. And besides, if you are that afraid of 
being found out, people around you probably already know. Now, a Swedish, a Swedish grandpa will be there with a ruler. Just to remind folks, when the serpent of hypocritical and or hateful rhetoric drips from the mouths of the ignorant, one must take a stand. And as for the fluffy bunny white light contingent of those I love very much in my life, you need to take care while I battle this crucifix-bearing demon of the sanctimonious extremist Vangies. Approach me as a friend, and I shall listen. As for the off offending parties, their colonial and puritanical mindset, which in my eyes is the serpent's head of despair, you ask for the storm on your horizon. You know, and, and it's, it, it is, the, I think we're in the last vestiges of this storm. But these Bible-toting, well-meaning folk think they own the world. Guess what, my little cherubim? It is our world, too. And the rest of us are not buying what you're selling. So take it to some other doorstep, please. You have had 2,000 years to torture and burn people at the stake, declare savage wars on infidels, homosexuals, the indigenous and esoteric, killing and decimating the spirit of great numbers of innocent people to impose your will on the rest of the world in such a way, quite frankly, as to make Jesus weep. You forget what it means to act in his name, don't you? You know, looking through history, I wonder... If, you know, those on that side of things uh, in, in the power centers really did try to emulate Christ. You know, how much collective blood do you really need to have on your hands? A new day is here. I, too, am a fisherman. And all this reminds me of having a great fish on the hook, fighting me in fear, jumping out of the water before I reel it in, gaff it and bring it on board. We are very sorry you fear so much. And you do have my empathy, a state which you helped to create within me because of the suffering you have heaped on me over the years with your physical, emotional, and spiritual beatings. No more. You claim to be of love. Well, I just don't need that kind of loving, especially from you. According to scripture, earth is the devil's playground. According to your sacred text, it belongs to him. Until God comes down and kicks ass, so leave it be and leave the rest of us alone as your leaders get caught in scandal after sexual scandal. Judgment is mine, saith the Lord, not yours. So quit it already and walk your walk. On even the most serious note, on an even more serious note, some of the blood from governments less enlightened than ours, like those to kill people, for the way that they love, like for example, David Cato in Uganda, is on the hands of evangelical missionaries and those that propagate the doctrine of abomination in their country. Yes, you pew-sitting, check-writing Christians that support this or that outreach group. Karmically speaking, you are not in the pink with this. If the representatives you are supporting preach the gospel of hate, was that in some Gnostic text I missed? Because I have read your books, including the one important to you, the New Testament, and I just don't find an edict or authorization to kill many millions of people over 2,000 years. I'm sure, Figures that I'm sure honestly made Hitler and Stalin envious. Um, you know, it was just on the installment plan. Oh, don't dwell in the past, my ass. The minute the United States becomes a theocracy, the earth would be soaked in blood once again, so spare me the defensive posturing. You know in your heart I'm right, as Barry Goldwater would say. It's a type of religiously sanctioned murder. Since you are so fond of name-calling, I should rather be a filthy sodomite than a life-taking murderer especially one that does it in the name of the divine. Something I hold sacred, and you should too, quite frankly. Those that draw from the self-righteous well of judgmental hatred and wrath that they themselves own does not belong in human hands, but that of their long-bearded, creamy-white European God on Judgment Day, 
Live the example of Jesus. That's why they call it Judgment Day, stupid. Words and the judgment they arouse do in effect kill people. I am no stranger to bullying, and for that matter a nasty fight. One that I more often than not walk away from, though a wounded victor. In their spiritually tainted rhetoric, they call me a sodomite, abomination, godless, satanics, and laws. These are not flattering remarks. You know, it's just not nice, but the, the highest of religious lowbrow insults they can heap on my kind. You know, free spirits. How does one go about sitting down at the table and breaking bread with such as these? Not that they should ever want to share a table with some vile fag. Yes, my kind. A being with a soul that loves differently from the mainstream. Love dictates the terms of love, motherfucker. Oh, and the way you dastardly folks use the term choice in an attempt to lump us in with that other thing you want to deny, like a woman's right to choose? A little advice from a spiritual leader of a different stripe. I have a rule you might want to pay attention to. Don't piss off the women. Oops, too late. That's not going to stop you from blaming everyone else except your stupid, undisciplined leaders with their centrist and sometimes blunt stupidity, words that are easily traced back to them. You say judgment belongs to God himself and not humankind. Yeah, right. So stop judging. We just had a contestant for the great beauty pageant of the presidency that bullied and humiliated a young man in his high school days for being, in essence, a big fag. And because he was a Mormon with Jesus on his side to beat this poor man, to, you know, correct his behavior. A recovering gay basher president that wishes to put women in a chastity belt? Really? You guys, from that end of things, those that support the nut jobs in the Tea Party and the extreme of the GOP, those that own too many guns, those with poisonous and hateful rhetoric, and let's not even talk about the simmering racist resentment of a brilliant, articulate Cosby kid who happens to be in the White House. You need to wake up, as a new day is at hand. I suppose it has come time for a showdown, and even if I am not there to carry the banner forever, others influenced by my words and work shall be. Now, I have been careful with my wording in pointing out a particular kind of Vanji Christian, those with judgmental hate dripping from their fangs. Still, just in case innocent folk have been offended, this is what needs to be said. Jesus rocks. And I love the example of his rising above tremendous suffering with passion for the sake of humankind. I have no quarrel with good God-fearing Christians, those that believe in and honor the democratic position of live and let live. Those that would fall on a sword before trying to impose their will on others, rather than those that would use one form or another of a weapon on me because of the way I love. In a bit of, of judgment is my now sentiment, I have one final thing to say. To say. So hater judgmental Vanji Protestants won't feel singled out on this matter. You know, fuck the dungeon pope and his moral chastity belts, iron maidens, and torture racks. There, I did something for the Protestants for a change. You know, I mean... I can be glib about this because I will tell you, you know, after all these years, if you don't, if you don't maintain a, a sense of humor, you may be in danger of committing suicide. And that certainly happens with a young, uh, a lot of young people in this world that happen to be gay, lesbian, transgender, or bisexual. Uh, and this rhetoric of hate uh, is a contributing factor. You know, were this, uh, you know, a, a case on the streets, um, you know, people would be found of, of basically, you know, assisting in a suicide. Because that honestly is exactly what is being done uh, when people preach from the Bible 
had a lot of these kids. Uh, it's a terrible thing. I mean, you just all you have to do is Google the statistics. So, you know, this is not said out of hatred. I mean, you know, what is this? That when I stand up on my own two feet and box back, I'm a big hater? You know, give me a fucking break with this. You know, I kept my mouth shut for years um, with regard to the outside world because I didn't want to offend their sensibilities. And yes, as I've gotten older, I've gotten a lot more radical. You know, we really need to get it together. And I will remind my friends on the GLBT side of things that without the moderates and progressives within the heterosexual community, we will lose the battle. We don't want a theocracy in this country. You know, we definitely don't. It's a dangerous thing. And while people like to point out you know, Sharia law and the harshness of, you know, stonings in Muslim countries, etc. What do you think America would be like if the evangelicals took over and instituted a theocratic government? Don't kid yourself. As I say at the end of my videos, this is you, Slenberg. Have a wonderful life. Thank you for. I know.